the Sibelius Violin Concerto is one of the most exciting emotionally and technically in the entire repertoire for my instrument. That is why I derive so much satisfaction from playing it. began composing his only violin concerto in 1902, but it wasn't until 1905 that he gave it its definitive form. He was at the height of his career at the age of just over 40, and an immense success in Berlin, where he was placed together with Richard Strauss as one of the foremost contemporary composers. And yet, his personal insecurities filled him with great doubts. To the rest of the world, he seemed like a bon vivant. But to his wife, he was a source of constant despair. She would seek him out in clubs and taverns, and it was largely to escape the temptations of the fashionable life and drink that the couple withdrew to the country where the composer could work in peace. Sibelius was an accomplished violinist himself and needed no help in writing the solo part for his violin concerto but he had tremendous problems in coming to grips with the structure of the work. He was reluctant to let it leave his hands until he had rewritten it several times. Once I had taken up the concerto seriously, I began to play it often enough. In the spring of 1949, I played it in Helsinki, Finland with the radio orchestra. The next day, I was overwhelmed to receive this note from the great master himself, who had heard my performance on the radio. I was very moved to read the following lines. Dear Miss Handel, please accept my most cordial thanks for your excellent performance of my violin concerto, which I was delighted to hear. You played it masterfully in every respect. I congratulate you upon the great success. But above all, I congratulate myself that my concerto has found an interpreter of your rare standard. With kindest regards, Jean Sibelius. He will appreciate that this is among my most treasured possessions. I think this is a very special concerto. Few works have such contrasting elements of fire and ice, which is so fascinating. You have to have been to Finland, perhaps, to understand that music. The people there are like that, practical, yet dreamers too. This is what Franz Paul Decker and I, in collaboration with the orchestra, are attempting to express. In the very beginning of the first movement, there is a kind of silence, a stillness of the heart, combined with a melancholy longing, which defies description. There is a sense of contemplation, a philosophical contemplation. It is as if someone had taken time to dream, which strikes a responsive chord in my own soul. I have always been drawn to melodies and themes which have this sadness, this nostalgic quality in them. Ever since I can remember, it has been part of me. As for the second movement, we are in a different world entirely. There is inspired romanticism and majestic grandeur. Melodies, sublime melodies, 
so to heaven. You have to be made of stone not to be moved by it. For the finale, this is an incredible dance macabre. Polar bears dancing, as someone once described it. There is a basic, almost primitive rhythm pulsating relentlessly throughout the whole movement. It seems to stretch toward the midnight sun, which is beautiful, but also a little terrifying. Awe-inspiring says it, but does not really explain it. <laughs> 